So one of the questions I get every day is people want to walk through the truck and what specific equipment we use. So let's get at it. We use Ford F550 cabin chassis and people ask, why do we use Ford? Well, when Chevy, GMC and Dodge can come down here and show me a, a truck that's as capable as this one, I might consider switching. They know where to find me. This is obviously a dually because of the increased weight need and we get all our trucks in four wheel drive. Because we're coming pretty close to the federal maximum weight limit, we do get the extra heavy duty payload package, which helps out a lot. Trucks come from Ford, they come with these chrome bumpers and tow hooks. And honestly, that's just damage waiting to happen. Rip that off and have a local vendor put on a ranch hand. And this is about 350 pounds of steel. It's the heaviest duty ranch hand bumper that our local vendors can provide for us. And it is designed to protect the truck in case we run into a deer or get into a motor vehicle accident. Business owner, this truck makes between a thousand and three thousand dollars a day. And we don't want the fact that we got hit by a deer or another car to put the truck in the shop and make it to where we're not making money. So the deer guard at 2,500 bucks plus the lights really seems like a payoff. My 50 has got two sets of headlights, so four lights in the front. And then we added a total of six additional LED lights. The nice thing is, is the lights on the outsides can rotate to any direction that we need. And these floodlights on the front are super, super bright. So if we're go going down a dark driveway, um, we can illuminate the entire dry driveway. This is the front seat that the driver sees. So over here, we've got a RAM mount that holds a laptop or ta tablet. We've got the Samsara camera. That's got a camera that faces back towards the driver, can see everything in the cab to see what the driver's doing. And it also has a camera that can point out to see what's going on in front of the vehicle. The footage is recorded 24 seven on the Amazon cloud. It also has a unique program in there that will automatically alert the office and the driver if they see distracted driving, eyes not on the road, seat belt not on, lane position, following distance provides a record of that so that we can coach the driver and also mitigate liability if somebody blames us for something that we didn't do. On the other side, if we do do something wrong, that's there and it catches it too. Because this requires a cell card, we have another dash cam up here that saves it to SD memory. And then of course the driver has the largest Garmin that we could find so that he can easily see where he's going. It's really, really nice to have the dash set, set up like this with the drink holders, more cup holders over here, and then just all his information. So his work orders are gonna come in here. His map is gonna be up here. This Ram mount, just like is in the cop cars, can rotate over so that the passenger can also help him with directions or work orders or anything like that. Of course, it is a septic truck, so I always have hand sanitizer in all the doors. Gloves are supposed to be kept in the side pocket. Gloves and hand sanitizer in the back seat for the working crew. Back seat here, we have the Yeti cooler for the crew. Now, the thing about the Yeti cooler is it is an expensive cooler and we could get one for a lot cheaper, but this keeps ice cold for two or three days. And just on the cost of ice with a crappy cooler and having to replace the ice every day versus this cooler, um, the cooler actually pays for itself in less than a year, just in ice. We've got sanitizing wipes and pump oil. We'll get to what that is used for. The crew keeps their rain jackets here and that is a first aid kit. Um, everything up to and including gunshots. So uh, that got sparked by uh, one of our employees having a gun pulled on him by some squatters. We also carry a cobalt floodlight uh, which uh, with, a, with a battery that lasts for a really, really long time. So they can use that as additional work light if they need it. Trucks are also equipped with batteries for the uh, people's cell phone lights, um, flip off valves for emergency jobs that need a quick repair. We've got a roller wheel in here uh, so they can measure distance. And of course, uh, you know, you never know what's going to come up. So definitely always keep duct tape on the truck. Really, really important. We also keep uh, bags of copper sulfate that we've manufactured so that um, we can do incidental repairs and root treatments on septic systems. I'm waiting to get pulled over by the cops and then look at this and think we're running drugs of some sort. Uh, this looks a little like breaking bad stuff, but it's copper sulfate, uh, which is a pretty pow powerful poison. So uh, hopefully it won't be mistaken for drugs by any local law enforcement. Of course, we keep some uh, cat litter for cleanups if we spill any sewage to gum it up so that we can shovel it and remove it from the customer's property. We order these trucks, they're cabin chassis, which means the only thing that comes on it is from here forward. 
All and, and, and this isn't there. There's just two rails that run out the back to the bumper right underneath there. So all of this stuff we have to pay to add. So the truck boxes, the truck bed, the tank, the pump assembly, all that is manufactured custom for us. Now we have two trucks and one of the trucks has a CM truck bed on it. The other one has a PJ's truck bed. We're actually more impressed with the PJ's truck bed, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the CM truck truck bed. And we found it to be very, very good. We just have a preference of the PJ's. This tank is 12 feet long and the bed is 12 feet long too, except the tank extends past the edge of the bed. And the reason for that is, is we have to have some space here to where we can get behind the tank, put tools, make repairs to glass and things like that. So what we had to do was we had to have Abernathy custom manufacture this piece and add it on, which extends our bed out about 18 inches and allows a good step and also if we back into something we're not damaging the bed itself this which can be easily cut off and replaced is a sacrificial piece the tank is technically a thousand gallon tank but that's not really truthful because while the tank could hold more than a thousand gallons its functional volume or what it could suck up before it was at capacity is slightly less because there does have to be air across the top of the tank on the inside so actually a little bit less tank is manufactured it's actually lifted onto the truck by those two uh, crane points and it's set down on the truck which is a surprisingly impressive feat to watch because this thing isn't level if or sorry isn't evenly distributed with weight because they're on on this side of the tank there's this whole pump assembly which weighs hundreds of pounds so when they're trying to mount this with a crane it keeps wanting to go like this so watching those guys do that it never sets down flat it's always at an angle so that's an impressive feat to watch another thing that we had abernathy do for us and i haven't seen it done on any other septic truck and it's just a great idea is have them take pieces of tubular steel like this and just weld them onto the truck to hold the probe rods so that little assembly right there makes it to where the probe rods stay on the truck and it's super easy for the crew to get. Back of the truck, these valves are made in Italy, whereas these Dixon connectors are made right here in the United States. These valves are super cool in the fact that they're really, really good valves, but not so great in the fact that they are the first thing on the truck to freeze. So you really have to protect these valves from freezing. At our local supplier, which is Cross Hose, these things are actually fairly important for each one of these pieces we could pay anywhere from five dollars to 45 dollars depending on the piece so we make sure that all of these are cabled to the truck and inside we dump this out is a rubber seal and that rubber seal is important because these valves won't maintain a proper seal without it well they keep popping out so we've had to go to the trouble to glue those seals in and part of me wonders, why don't they just do that at the factory? You may have noticed that there's two valves, one down here and one up there. The reason we have two is because we have found a little trick of physics that makes our life a little bit easier. We dump out of this valve, but we pump into this valve. And the reason being is, is whenever you're pumping into the bottom valve, the pump is having to hold back all the water and pull your water. So what we do is we have this capped off to where the water stays in there on its own, and we pump into the higher valve, and we find that it increases pump time greater, or sorry, it decreases pump time greater than 20%. So we actually are able to accomplish the job faster. Also, there's this little glass bubble on the truck and that's so that the operator knows when the truck is getting full. So we really can't put more sewage in it than above that little glass bubble. These little horns on the top of the truck, people ask us all the time what those are. And those are for when we're doing really difficult pumps. Let's say that the tank is 400 feet that way and we need to use a, uh, a booster pump way down there to pull it up here. Instead of running this truck as a vacuum truck, what we do is we'd shut the vacuum off and we would run electric booster pumps and that increases our pumping distance to where instead of using this hose, which has a maximum pumping distance of about 250 feet, we can go off the side of mountains, up mountains, whatever, and use those electric electric pumps and get distances of six, 800 feet, even a thousand feet. So having the versatility 
of those pumps means that we can do jobs that other people can't. This little Honda GX390 motor is freaking awesome. It is very reliable. We've never had one go down, uh, but we do keep an extra just in case it does so that we can bolt this one off and put another one on. So obviously the gas tank is up here, throttle controls or choke controls over here, throttle there. Um, we don't actually use the pull start. We went ahead and got the key start, which is absolutely wonderful. And that key start is run by this battery. The weird thing is, is this, these, these batteries we found, um, <clears throat> they don't last more than a year. So they're on an automatic replacement at a year. The pump is made by Massport, as you can see on the front there, it's upside down. But it is the model, I don't know if you can read that, um, HXL75. This is a really, really good pump. It's probably a little oversized for our tank because pumps are sized to the tank and to the load that they're supposed to be doing. This, this handle on top here controls what the pump does. So if we have it here in neutral, it doesn't do anything. It just spins and it doesn't create vacuum or pressure. If we push it forward, towards the tank that's going to create suction inside the tank it just moves a fin in there that adjusts where the air goes and if we move it back away from the tank that creates pressure and it's going to blow things out of the tank the weak link that we found is in the winter water collects right in there i'll see if i can get a better view over here right in there and when that water seeps down and freezes the entire pump freezes and you have to disassemble this and take this whole contraption off uh, in order to unfreeze the pump. So kind of a pain in the ass, but it is what it is. This is the oil that lubricates the pump. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but there's these little tiny uh, plastic tubings and they inject that oil right in there into the pump to keep it moving nice and neat. This pump is a vacuum pump, which means it's not meant to move water. It's only meant to move air. And if sewage were to actually get into this pump, it would ruin the pump or potentially ruin it. And we would have to look at rebuilding it. So up there on top of the tank is what's called a trap. And if the water level gets to a certain point, instead of sucking water, there's a ball that'll go up and block the pump. The tone of the pump will change and the driver has to be paying attention to that in order to shut the pump off because running it like that for an extended period of time could damage the pump. Well, do you really want to risk thousands of dollars on a pump with just one trap? So we had them install a second trap, which is pretty standard. It's made in Italy as well, and it has a plastic dish, which mm, I'm not a fan of the plastic dish. And if I have to build, build it again, I would get a metal secondary trap. But this one is lighter and weight is money. Um, so we would have to disconnect this, twist it off and clean it out. But this is another ball trap that will protect the pump again from any sewage getting into it. This is sort of like the tool storage area. And what we do is we have all the trucks have different color tools. So we've got a neon yellow, a dark blue, a baby blue, a red, a green, a black. All the tools are different colors and that lets the inventory people know if the right truck has the right tools and prevents other people from taking tools that aren't theirs. A portion of our life is spent backing this truck up driveways that are treacherous. So in order to facilitate this for after hours calls, we had a pretty big um, light bar installed on the back of the truck. And this thing is just a floodlight from hell and illuminates everything behind the truck and makes it really, really uh, great for us to be able to back up. We haven't really had the opportunity to use the tow hitch because uh, we don't really pull anything with these trucks, but it's there if we need it. Tires put on the truck cost us about $1,700. We run Continentals, uh, pretty much the best tire that we can get for these trucks because they're on, I believe, 19 and a half inch rims. So these are the HDR Plus tires by Continental. Um, the tire size for anybody who wants to know is 225 70 um, R119.5. So about $1,700 to get all six tires on the truck. And the tires last for maybe 20,000 miles, maybe. So if we get 20, 25,000 miles out of them, we consider ourselves to be doing really, really well. And that's just because of the weight that we carry and the treacherous roads and driveways that, that we're on. They really don't have any business being driveways, but somebody built a house there. Obviously we have a gas can to run the uh, gasoline pump that powers the vac on this. Um, we keep it on the opposite side of the truck. So 
this is sort of the storage side. The reason being is, is that Honda Motor puts out gas and we've had several instances where it melted the plastic on the gas can, ruined a gas can, and was potentially a fire hazard. I forgot the exact manufacturer of these hoses, but I think it's Goodyear. And these are the Tiger Tail ho hoses. Each of the hoses that we use is 20 feet long. Um, and we carry eight standard three inch hoses on our truck, which gives us a pumping range of about 180 feet. And then provided it's on this truck, somewhere I don't see it usually on the trucks is a two inch hose it's probably hidden under there somewhere um, and that is for going in smaller pipes into tanks um, and also can be used in ex as an extension to bring us up to 200 feet that we can pump from this is a pretty cool little tool I'm not sure what its exact name is but we call it Mukintukin and it is just a rigid pipe that connects to the end of the hose. So whenever the pump operator is trying to suck out a tank, he can use this rigid pipe instead of having a floppy hose that goes everywhere. And this is made out of Schedule 80 pipe and it is connected to a regular connector. So this is just like a rigid pipe so that they can really clean the bottom of the tanks really well. As far as servicing the trucks, um, up until this point, we've only allowed the dealer to service the truck. It's under warranty and we want Ford being the one that takes care of it. We want all Ford parts on it. However, the Ford dealerships have pretty much pissed us off with their crappy service. And so at this point, we're gonna be looking to delete the DEF system off of these trucks and get uh, potentially another service area because uh, like I said, the Ford dealers just do not have the sense of urgency in getting these trucks back on the road that a business owner would want. Truck with the lights on and it's broad daylight so they don't seem so bright. But I'm here to tell you in broad daylight, you can't look at those lights, they will hurt your eyes. The truck is an F550 manufactured by Ford. The truck bed is a CMM truck truck bed. The pump, pump motor and tank are all custom manufactured by Abernathy out of Hickory, North Carolina. They are the best tank manufacturer that I could find. They do a fantastic job. And every single time we've had them make a tank, they have delivered it early.